Bright Girl Health here and I'm making a video all about how to use your temperature and how to track your temperature in order to track your period cycle and even to track ovulation. This video was requested on my Instagram and I'm really excited to do it because you can track your temperature with all different kinds of thermometers. So I'm going to be telling you how to track it what you can use to track it and talk about a different a few different reasons why we might use temperature to track our menstrual cycles before we hop into the video i just wanted to ask you if you would subscribe to this channel i am looking at making a few different videos in the next coming weeks just to frequently ask questions i get asked on instagram all the time so a periods hacks a period hacks video, a video about even tracking cervical fluid, a video about menstrual cups and period underwear. I'm really excited to make those videos for you girls and I'd really, really appreciate it if you just stopped for a second and subscribed to this Bright Girl Health channel. Um, I really hope that I can help you to understand your period better and to have a better period because we all want to have better periods. So let's jump into why on earth you would even use temperature to track your cycle the first reason you would track your cycle is to be able to predict when your cycle or when your period is coming next so a lot of people don't realize that even if you've got an irregular period you can still predict when your next period is going to come even if you only get one period a year and the reason for that is that periods always come approximately 12 to 16 days or on average 14 days, that's a four, not a 14. 14 days, two weeks after ovulation happens. Even if you've got a 50 day cycle or a 21 day cycle or a cycle that only happens, a period that only happens twice a year or once a year, if you know when ovulation is happening, you can predict your period better. So the second reason that you would want to use your temperature to track your cycle is to just be more in tune with your body. For me, when I found out how to do this, I felt so empowered because I was like, oh my goodness, like I finally understand something about my body that I didn't know for like 20 something years. For 20 something years, I just thought your period just came. And then I realized that your period actually speaks to you. It communicates to you. And one of the biggest ways, there's a motorbike. Thanks guys, bye, see ya, have a good ride. One of the biggest ways that your period can talk to you is through ovulation. Ovulation, like I said, can let you know that your period's about to happen. It can also tell you um, if you're stressed, ovulation might be delayed, or if you've got other kind of hormone imbalances, ovulation also might be delayed. So if we listen to our body and we take notice of when ovulation is happening, we can actually get to the bottom of and the, the root cause of some of our period symptoms. Uh, and then tackle those in order to have a better period. Ovulation is one of the biggest ways our body speaks to us. As women, I think it's so important that we don't just ignore our bodies, that we embrace them, we listen to them when they're talking to us and we honor them. And so for me, knowing when I'm ovulating makes me feel so empowered to be able to take my health into my own hands. And the third reason we might track ovulation is to either avoid or achieve pregnancy. I just remember watching that uh, episode of Friends where Monica and Chandler are like, we're ovulating, let's go do it, because they wanted to make a baby. Okay, where are all my ovulation sticks? There's only one here. I might have checked to see if I was ovulating a couple times. <laughs> Does anyone else watch Friends? Oh my goodness, comment below which friends character you are and also comment below what you think I am. The first person to comment which friends character they think I am and get it right, you can get a shout out in my next video. I am like very strongly one of the friends. Like it's not even a competition. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So if we know that we're ovulating around the time of ovulation, a couple days before and a couple days after is when we are most fertile. So it's when our body is most able to make a baby. And that's because that's the time that an egg gets released from one of our ovaries. It's only when that egg is released from the ovaries that it can actually be fertilized by a sperm if 
sexual intercourse takes place. Uh. The days around ovulation are our most fertile times. If an egg hasn't been released and an egg isn't there in the fallopian tubes, then we're not going to be able to get pregnant because there's no egg to be fertilized. That's why a lot of people will use ovulation tracking to time intercourse in order to get pregnant or in order to avoid getting pregnant because you can avoid getting pregnant by timing intercourse so it doesn't coincide with the day surrounding ovulation where we're most fertile, which is really interesting. Okay, so why temperature? Like, we know now why it's important to track ovulation, but why is our temperature going to tell us when we ovulate? Let's go to biology class. I should get my glasses. Hold on a sec. Got my glasses. Welcome to our Mrs. Spacavento's biology class. <laughs> They make me look smart. These are my Baxter Blue blue light blogging glasses. I really don't need them right now. So what happens in ovulation is, like I said, an egg is released from one of our ovaries. Now, once that egg is released, the follicle from which it came starts to die. And we call that the corpus luteum. Now what that starts to do as it dies is produce a hormone called progesterone. Now, amongst other things, progesterone will produce heat in the body. Now, I'll insert a um, photo here of a progesterone chart. You can see that progesterone starts to rise just after ovulation in the second half of our cycle, so in the two weeks before we get our period again. I'll also insert here a temperature chart. Now this temperature chart also shows us just like progesterone increases in the two weeks before our period, our temperature also does the same thing. It also increases just after ovulation. So that means, let me take my glasses off now. Smart. So what that means is our temperature will rise just after we ovulate because of the progesterone that's being produced in our body. So if we can see where our body's temperature is rising, then we can tell that we've just ovulated. Ovulation has just taken place. Now you won't know until after you've ovulated. So with temperature alone, you can't tell that you're leading up to ovulation. However, you can tell you're leading up to ovulation by looking at your cervical fluid, um, even cervical position and a few other things. I am definitely wanting to do a video on those things. So um, if you give this video a thumbs up, if I get to let's say a hundred thumbs up, I'll do a video all about how to use your cervical fluid or your discharge to tell when you're ovulating. I love talking about that stuff. So a hundred thumbs up and I'll make that video. So you won't know that you've ovulated until after it's happened, but that's a really useful tool to be able to track our cycle to tell if we actually are ovulating. Some people get bleeds that they think are periods. Maybe they get bleeds like three times or two times in a month. And if we can tell that ovulation is happening, then we know that menstruation or our period should happen two weeks after. If we can't see ovulation has happened through a temperature shift or a temperature increase, but we still get a bleed, what that can indicate to us is it's not actually a true period or it's not actually a true menstrual bleed. We might be bleeding for other reasons. So it is really, really useful in keeping track of our health, keeping track of our period. A lot of people actually ask if you take your temperature through your bum. You don't take your temperature through your butt. You put it in your mouth. I'm making a YouTube video. No. 